Crusoe Building was a 1920s warehouse built on the banks of the San Antonio River. It was renovated and restored by the local community. The area is now an arts-oriented, mixed-use development of loft studio-style apartments, galleries, retail, performance spaces, artist workspaces, sign offices, and a brew pub. Developed from a grassroots event in July of 1986, Blue Star Contemporary Art Center is the first and longest-running venue for contemporary art in San Antonio. The Blue Star Contemporary Art Center is a non-profit contemporary art center that seeks to advance the growth and understanding of contemporary art, artists, and the curatorial process. Through exhibitions and a variety of programs, Blue Star is an active participant in the development of regional, national, and international contemporary art, and provides a lively forum for the visual arts dialogue. The center has showcased local and international artists such as Chuck Ramirez, Sky Patterson, Julia Landois, John Mata, Kimberly Obishon, Linda Tate, and Richie Budd. Artists from across the country and indeed the world are represented at the complex, from painters to etchers and folk artists to feminist photographers. Blue Star is widely recognized as the catalyst for the revitalization of the South Alamo neighborhoods that surround the site. We are now approaching the city's historic King William District. Between South Alamo Street and the river, this 25-block area is a little different to the rest of San Antonio. It is one of the most desirable parts of the city to live in with its elegant late 19th century homes and shady streets. Please remain seated while the bus is in motion, and keep an eye out for low-hanging branches. We're on the edge of the district, and as we are not allowed to take our city sightseeing tour bus in, if you'd like to hop off to have a walk around, please do so at our stop. It is a very pleasant and interesting part of the city to have a wander around in, if you have time. Gunther House and Steve's Homestead Museum are open to the public, as is the San Antonio Conservation Society near King William Park. There are also a number of excellent bed and breakfast establishments. The area was originally farmland, irrigated by waterways flowing from the San Antonio River, owned by the 1780 Mission San Antonio de Valero. From 1794, the missions were fully secularized, and the land belonging to Mission Concepcion was bought, sold, and divided into tracts by land speculators beginning in the 1840s. Carl Gunther, a German immigrant, was one of the first to settle here. He built a pioneer flour mill on the lower bend of the San Antonio River. A number of other powerful and successful German immigrants discovered the area and began building mansions using Greek Revival, Victorian, and Italian architectural styles. Ernst Altgeld, the first person to build on what is now King William Street, is thought to have saved his street after King Wilhelm I of Prussia. Some of the other residents of the city were a little less generous-spirited and referred to the area as Sauerkraut Bend. Americas characterizes the city's skyline and offers terrific views from its observation deck. A few years ago, the tower underwent a multi-million dollar makeover in order to attract more visitors. So if you fancy it, hop off the bus and take a look for yourself. 
Construction began in 1990 and it opened in 1993 at a cost of nearly $200 million. For horse racing, there is the track at Potama Park, which opened in 1995, 15 minutes north of the city of Selma. Live racing is generally held several times a week from the spring through to the fall. Cecile Fay Lasser, better known by her stage name of Joan Crawford, was born here in San Antonio in 1908. The movie legend's career would go on to span the golden age of Hollywood. She began her career as a dancer in nightclubs on the Broadway stage, and she continued to dance in her early films. The actress became a star with her performance as a liberated young woman, Diana Medford, in a 1928 movie, Our Dancing Daughters. Crawford would go on to make her first talk
rapper, explorer, state legislator, congressman, martyred at the Alamo, 1786 to 1836. If you joined our tour at the Alamo and are about to hop off, then thank you very much for traveling with us today. If you think our driver has done a good job for you and would like to leave a tip if you get off, I'm sure it'd be very much appreciated. We hope you've enjoyed our tour and found it entertaining as well as informative. Please keep your ticket safe as you may like to use it to hop back on later, or for a discount on one of our many other city sightseeing open top city bus tours worldwide. Here at Alamo Plaza is an excellent place to find somewhere to eat, drink, or go shopping. If you haven't yet had a proper look in and around the Alamo itself, we strongly recommend that you do before you leave town and take your camera with you. Opposite the Alamo are many popular tourist attractions and down just a few steps is the heart of our marvelous river walk. There's plenty for y'all to do here in old San Antonio. Please recommend us to your family and friends, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your time in our great city. These new American cowboys would often hold informal competitions among themselves in the various different outfits to see which group had the best riders, rovers, and all-around best rovers. It was from these types of competitions that modern rodeo would be born. With the advent of better transport links, the open range period came to an end, and there was no longer a need for long drives. The demand for the cowboy's labor began to fall. Many of these cowboys started to kick off an increasingly popular event, the Wild West Show. People like the legendary Buffalo Bill Cody began to organize these Wild West shows. The shows were partly theater and partly competition, with the objective both of making a profit and glamorizing and preserving the American life. Much of the spectacle and showmanship of today's rodeo comes from these types of Wild West shows. One distinguished participant of the show you may have heard of is Martha Jane Canary Bird, better known as Calamity Jane. She was a notorious frontiers woman who was the subject of many wild stories. In the show, she was a skilled horsewoman and expert rifle and revolver handler. Calamity Jane appeared in Wild West shows until 1902, when she was apparently fired for drinking and fighting. Will Rogers and Bill Pickett were other high-profile acts, as was the sharpshooter Annie Oakley, who was renowned for her trick shots. Annie was able to, from 30 paces, split the edge of a playing card, hit center of ace of spades, shoot down a playing card, toss in the air, shatter glass ball thrown in the air, and hit dimes held between her husband Frank Butler's fingers. Her most famous trick was a mirror trick in which she hit a target behind her, shooting backwards using a mirror to aim with. These outstanding feats of marksmanship amazed and thrilled the public, and meant she generated massive audiences for the shows. William Travis, who ended up commanding the defense of the Alamo, aged just 26, was born in South Carolina and moved to Alabama, where he had been a teacher and a lawyer. After an unsuccessful marriage, he moved to Texas to try and establish a law office. However, he greatly disliked Mexican rule, and when the Texas Revolution began, he signed up under Sam Houston. At the Alamo, he was supposed to be in charge of the regulars, and Jim Bowie, the volunteers. But when Bowie became too ill to lead, Travis took full command. Jim Bowie had been born in Georgia, and as a young man had moved to Louisiana, where he and his brother were in business cutting down trees and developing sugar plantations. His brother, Resin, is thought to have designed what later became known as the Bowie Knife around this time. Jim Bowie moved to Texas to continue his profitable land speculation business, but in 1833, he returned from a business trip to New Orleans to find that his wife and children had died in a cholera epidemic. When the revolution began in 1835, he became a volunteer. During the Battle of the Alamo, Bowie was struck down by typhoid, and it is believed that he was killed as he lay in his bed. The rather grand, wedge-shaped Gothic-style building that we can see down the street ahead on our right, with a tower at the top, is the Emily Morgan Hotel. The hotel is called the Emily Morgan because, according to folklore, the reason that General Santa Anna, who had six weeks earlier won the Battle of the Alamo, did not respond quickly to the Texan charge at the confrontation of San Jacinto was that he was being entertained in his tent during siesta time by Emily D. West, 
a 20-year-old mixed-race girl who had come to Texas from New York the previous year as an indentured servant to Colonel James Morgan. On the afternoon of the 21st of April, 1836, the Texas Army charged the Mexican camp, and because Santa Ana had posted no guards, General Sam Houston and his Texans won the decisive battle in 18 minutes. It is well known that Santa Ana was careless, but there is not much evidence to support the legend that Emily Morgan was the key to Texas victory at San Jacinto and heroine of the Texas Revolution. She is nevertheless widely believed to be the inspiration for the well-known song, The Yellow Rose of Texas, and we like the story. I have 
Cathedral Museum. During his time here, the papal mass in Westover Hills attracted 350,000 worshippers, which is thought to be the single largest gathering of people in the state of Texas for one event. The cathedral was founded in 1731 by a group of 15 or so families who came from the Canary Islands at the invitation of King Philip V of Spain. The cathedral was planned to be at the center of life in San Antonio. Jim Bowie was thought to have been married here, and during the Battle of the Alamo, General Santa Ana used the church as a lookout post. San Fernando Cathedral functions not just as a Catholic cathedral, but also as a hub of unity and harmony for all the God-loving people of the city and beyond. In 1871, the original dome ceiling collapsed and had to be rebuilt. It was around this time that the church was elevated to the status of a cathedral. Over 5,000 people participate in the weekend masses each week of the year. Over 900 baptisms, 100 weddings, 100 funerals, and many other services are held each year. During the 1930s, remains uncovered, which were thought to be those of Davy Crockett, Jim Bowie, and William Travis, were laid to rest in a casket at the back of the building.
Back in the 1920s, there was William Wellman's Paramount film, Wings, starring Gary Cooper, Clara Bow, and Buddy Rogers. Or King Vider's MGM film, The Big Parade, starring John Gilbert. Steve McQueen's The Getaway, Steven Spielberg's Sugarland Express, and Jeff Bridges' Nadine all used the city to film. As of more recent hit movies, such as Sandra Bullock's Miss Congeniality and Robert Rodriguez's Spy Kids. There are many more, of course, that have either been shot in or featured in the city, including 2004's The Alamo, starring Billy Bob Thornton and Dennis Quaid. Director John Ford's brother, Frank, starred in the first film about the Alamo in 1911, The Immortal Alamo. It was shot in San Antonio after Jackson Melody shifted to production center here. The film also made use of the San Francisco Sterling, a part of the Alamo. But of course, the film that is probably most associated with the city is John Wayne's 1960 film, The Alamo. Wayne himself directed the film, produced the film, and starred in the film as Colonel Baby Crockett. His co-stars were Richard Whitmark, Lawrence Harvey, and Frankie Avalon. The film was shot mostly in Texas, though not actually here in the city. He began making plans for the film in the late 1940s, and through the 1950s, he continued to develop the project as he made films such as The Quiet Man, The Searchers, and Rio Bravo. Wayne said of his own Davy Crockett role, When I came down to Texas, I was looking for something. I didn't know what. Had me some money, had me some metal, but none of it seemed a lifetime worth of the pain of the other before me. It's like I was empty. Well, I'm not empty anymore. That's what's important. I feel useful in this old world. To hit a lick for what's wrong, or to say a word for what's right, even though you get lost for saying that word. As a career progressed, John Wayne changed his body about his values.
will shortly be briefly stopping at the Blue Star Arts Complex, which is an innovative adaptation of historic warehouse buildings. The main Blue Star building was a 1920s warehouse built on the banks of the San Antonio River. It was renovated and restored by the local community. The area is now an arts-oriented, mixed-use development of loft studio-style apartments, galleries, retail, performance spaces, artist workspaces, design offices, and a brew pub. Developed from a grassroots event in July of 1986, Blue Star Contemporary Art Center is the first and longest-running venue for contemporary art in San Antonio. The Blue Star Contemporary Art Center is a non-profit contemporary art center that seeks to advance the growth and understanding of contemporary art, artists, and the curatorial process. Through exhibitions and a variety of programs, Blue Star is an active participant in the development of regional, national, and international contemporary art and provides a lively forum for the visual arts dialogue. The center has showcased local and international artists such as Chuck Ramirez, Sky Patterson, Julia Landois, John Matta, Kimberly Obershawn, Linda Pace, and Richie Budd. Artists from across the country and indeed the world are represented at the complex, from painters to etchers and folk artists to feminist photographers. Blue Star is widely recognized as the catalyst for the revitalization of the South Alamo neighborhood that surrounds the site.
celebrated the shared heritage of Latin America and San Antonio. Expedition ran from April to October of that year, and one of the big successes was the Institute of Texan Cultures, which examines how many different ethnic groups have contributed to Texas, its growth, and its success over the years. The park is over five acres in total. Over six million visitors came to enjoy it during that six-month period in 1968, and of course, countless more since. Opposite Hemisphere Park is the area known as La Villita, or Little Village. This area was an original settlement, San Antonio's first neighborhood, and it was occupied in the mid to late 18th century by people with no titles to the land. From the late 18th century, European settlers began to live here. During the Battle of the Alamo, General Santa Ana used the area to fire some of his cannons from. The area is architecturally interesting and even has Victorian influences. The area was preserved as the rest of the city grew up around it in the second half of the 20th century, and it is now a National Historical District. It's an arts community with lots of craft shops, boutiques, and restaurants. Its artisan theater is a well-used facility and sits on the river walk behind the shop. Thank you. 
Selva. Live racing is generally held several times a week from the spring through to the fall. The five-level Spanish-style grandstand is impressive, and there's plenty of bars, restaurants, lounges, and food halls to keep everyone happy. When Lucille Fay Lasser, better known by her stage name of Joan Crawford, was born here in San Antonio in 1908, the movie legend's career would go on to span the golden age of Hollywood. She began her career as a dancer in nightclubs on the Broadway stage, and she continued to dance in her early films. The actress became a star with her performance as a liberty and young woman in Diana Bedford in a 1928 movie called Dancing Daughters. Crawford would go on to make her first talk to the Mighty Hulk with Robert Montgomery the following year. She would go on to make the death with Carl Gable and also MGM's most prestigious movie of 1932, Grand Hotel. During the early part of her career, she was married to actor Douglas Fairbanks. Thank you. 
very much for traveling with us today. If you think our driver has done a good job for you and would like to leave a tip as you get off,